One of the things that we have talked about, why do we do poetry here at a man's conference? Yeah. And I'm convinced that there's a, there's a poet inside of each of us, every single one of us. It doesn't have to become the Robert Bly. You don't even have to become the Steve Lick of your block in the city, you know. This is not about creating a celebrity. We don't need more celebrities. We need more community, more relationship. And looking for the poetry within ourselves, we form a relationship with that. And then we're going to keep, continue to talk about relationship. There's a resonance and an incandescence that comes when you start tapping that imagery that's inside of you that comes up like dreams. We've often said that the stories that are told here are the dreams of a culture. The imagery that, uh, that's in fairy tales, those are the dreams of that fairy tale culture. One of the things that we, we share across the world are those archetypes, those imagistic archetypes. And we're hearing them. That's why it's, it's so wonderful to hear these stories over and over again because, oh, the witch. Yeah. We all have an image of a witch. M my image is different than Thomas's different than Doug's, but it has the same resonance probably for each of us, but the image is different. The image is individual. The archetype is universal, and we have, the, we have that relationship between the individual and the universal. We all understand the emotions that come up. When we start hearing them in other men, we understand that. You know, it's amazing. We don't have to be told. We just understand because we already have relationship with ourselves, with our own poetry, and we, we're just not letting it out. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of shift directions. You got anything to add on to this? Well, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to throw in here that I think we're both operating under the assumption that writing poetry is a rewarding, worthwhile activity in itself. You don't need <clears throat> any farther goal of advancement in poetry to make the practice of poetry rewarding. You know, we, I, I guess it's the pleasure principle, partly. You know, it's pleasure infused with meaning. I mean, what a good deal that is. It's pleasurable to write poems and they're a, a medium in which to concentrate in these various lines and vectors of meaning in our lives. The more we do it, the more we try to pull into it and the richer we try to make them on one level. But on another level, we're just a guy, you know, with a pen and a notebook. And, it's, and it feels good to do. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. elaborate on yeah. that. Uh, one, one other, just one other thing. One of the most despicable things I ever witnessed in, in the poetry world was hearing an ex-editor of Poetry Magazine, which is the biggest poetry publication in the United States, encouraging a room full of little old lady poets out in rural Wisconsin that they too could become famous published poets. It was complete crap. Yeah. And he was completely leading them down the wrong road for the wrong reasons. And that yeah. was disgusting. Yeah. Yep. We won't do that. No. That's not to say that there's not a great poem mm -hmm. inside of each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. About 30 years ago, mm -hmm. I was reading a, a novel. Mm -hmm. And it was set in Mexico. And one of the characters in, in, was a poet. And he said... Every human being has at least one great poem inside of them. Every human being. 
He says, the, the, the poet with practice practices to bring more great poems out. But that's just what we do. We choose to do that just like a, a craft beer maker.